Well, thanks again for joining me on another episode of Seward for Good. As you can see today, we're not in our normal setting. I'm actually in Melbourne and I'm with Paul Evans, the president of the Australian Institute of Waterproofing, the AIW. Paul, thanks for joining me. Yeah, pleasure. Good so to be here. Paul is a business owner of a contracting firm in Victoria, FEW, Fiddle and Evans Waterproofing. However, Paul's been the president of the AIW for the last three years and I thought many of you, many of you have in, uh, asked me questions before about the AIW, what it is in terms of an institution or a, or a body for the waterproofers and who better to speak to but the president himself. So Paul, how long have you been doing this for now? Yeah, well it's about nearly three years. Um, I'm in the third year of tenure. So uh, given it the best, it's a voluntary sort of set up. So it's difficult to find the time to do what we need to do. But uh, with the 16 strong committee at the moment, it's uh, certainly making it a lot easier than what it has been. We were down to a core of four there in the first year when I came on board and uh, it was hard work. So the ARW historically was a Melbourne based initiative. I remember that Pretty a much year, so. Years ago, yeah, yeah. and then it sort of branched out with a few chapters in different states. Yep. So now we're. But where, where are you at with it? And what, what is the what is Right the across name? Australia, basically, to, it, to as much as we can. We're, we're represented in uh, WA, um, SA that you know about yourself, and uh, we've got uh, Sydney, we're New South Wales, we've got Queensland, um, and that's it for the moment. So, but uh, we've got about just under 600 members strong throughout Australia, and. Uh, it, uh, it's certainly a nice rep representation now that we've got. Um, we're getting a lot more interest recently. We've been going around doing a lot of shows, a lot of talks, and uh, that's and, and the aim of those talks, and Paul, what is what is it really? What's the objective of, of going around to those shows? All right. Well, I'm using scare tactics, uh, 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 showing the waterproofing failures. Awareness. Uh, basically. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so and that's uh, that's my main drive at the moment. Is going around to. We're tied up with the ADEB, which is Architects, Designers, Engineers and Builders. It's a, it's a group, it's a WA-based uh, company, and they set up these seminars, and they're a small group, might have 50 in a group, and that's right throughout Australia and each state. They've been fantastic. Not so much this year, but last year was really, really active. Um, I personally went to most states to talk, and so with our other committee members, uh, we're doing it as well. Uh, that was great awareness, because we're getting a great demographic of the construction industry. So you, you actually, you've got a, an audience of architects, engineers right there at your fingertips. Yes, and they're all asking the questions and it's close and personal and it, it's a really good message and uh, we found that really valuable. Really well, valuable. I was going to ask what the aim of the ALW is, but you've just got me on a question right now. Yeah. So what was the common thing that came around from that discussion with those shows? Yeah. What, what do you methodology, mean? methodology. Um, there was talk about materials, um, but methodology is probably the main thing. Everybody wants to know how to do it and uh, what they should be looking for. Uh, this is that, from a design perspective? Yes, from a design perspective. That actually drove towards us um, thinking about how we can get that message out, how we can get some training out there. Yep. Uh, we teared that up with the Master Builders Association in Victoria and we created a waterproofing course designed specifically for people who are in the industry but not necessarily waterproofers themselves. So that course is different than, say, a Certificate 3 course that an RTO would different. handle? Much different. It's really what you're looking at on the job. So when the supervisor for open site goes out on site and says, OK, how do I know whether this waterproof is doing the right thing or not? So we've, we've set up the course to show the key points that they need to be looking for and to, and to make sure that it's prepared correctly. Uh, they give the OK for the waterproof to then go on and do these next steps. So okay. that's that's pretty much in a, in a nutshell what we're doing. And I suppose I should probably start with this one, but what is the aim and the objective of the ARW? I mean, who, who are you? Australia yeah. Institute of Waterproofing? Well, a bunch of people that care about the industry. That's, that's what it really stems down to. I was moaning about this and that some five or six years ago, and my wife said, Paul, stop moaning and get out and do something, do something about, about it. it. So I did. I joined up with the ARW and before I knew it, I ended up in the chair. So, so. <laughs> well, The cream always comes to the top. Yeah. So yeah. in that time, but then the ARW is a group of people that care, but it's made up of who? Industry. Industry professionals, waterproofers, tilers, uh, manufacturers, uh, suppliers, suppliers uh, engineers. Uh, it's, it's right across the board. Um, it's a good matrix of people who are involved and, and uh, keen to be involved. And when you, when you say that, that's the committee or the members that you, you're getting? Uh, both. But the committee, the 16 strong, are across that, what I just mentioned, and then we've also stems out from that from the members themselves. So, so to, to grow the ARW, I mean, are you really pitching at 
those contractors that are waterproofing, whether it be a tiler, a waterproofer, a, a anything to do with making things watertight. Right. Really, it's it's, um, it's we're not we're not we don't hold back on who wants to become it. You know, we've got people from overseas, you know, um, that are just interested. Great. So they become affiliate members and so, and so on, and they just keep up with their newsletters and they want to know what's going on in Australia. Um, which is terrific. There's not many, but we might have, you know, maybe six or seven of them that are... Um, and, and the ideal membership you're trying to drive out there? Uh, I suppose it's, it comes down, we would love the applicators all to be members, so we can be their voice, and that's, and we want... And that, that, that's a really good point you say. I yeah. mean, I think, you know, this, this program, we've got followers across different areas, a lot of them are the applicators and contractors, but I actually think that a lot of them tune into Silver for Good and look for other similar shows for the fact that they don't feel like they have got a voice to put their their thoughts out there yeah so you know how does that ideally how would you like to be that voice for the for the applicator okay. in australia what i keep promoting all the time i don't get a lot of feedback on it which i'm a bit saddened about but uh, every newsletter i go out there i say please let me know what's going on if you've got a problem talk to us talk to me personally talk to any one of the committee members mm -hmm. you know if you, it doesn't matter as long as the message gets across and, then, and everybody says, I don't want to talk about the problems because it, it makes, they think they make them look like they're a bad applicator or not. We all make mistakes. Yeah. I've made mistakes and if, yeah. if, if you don't make mistakes, you're not going to learn. Yeah. Exactly right. So that's really what it's about. So we want them to talk to us to say, okay, here's, here's what's happened. Here's how I got out of it or here's how I fixed it or here's what I should do next time. Mm -hmm. And then we share that with everybody. We don't necessarily, it's not a, a witch hunt where we're trying to, bag anybody to say, okay, you should have done this, you should have done that. It's yeah. really about education and we all learn collectively from everybody else's mistakes as well. And also, not just mistakes, but everything, come up with good innovative ideas. Yep. Um, that's really important, we want that as well.